Welcome to Get Big Out Loud Radio, where we explore living the complex, funny, and beautiful ride of life with me, Carrie Knutson, and Dr. Pat on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Are your thoughts keeping you small? Are you ready to get big? I will offer you ideas to transform what you are thinking into conscious action. Explore what is keeping you small and how to shift your behaviors in order to get big. Learn what is possible for you. Get ready to get big and live life out loud starting now. Okay, so much fun. (laughs) Okay, Carrie. I love the episode title today because it is really a dilemma. And I'll tell you what the dilemma is. I think everybody knows when enough is enough. I think we all know it. And yet it doesn't register. So I love the word enough. And what you're going to really bring us through today is you're going to walk us through like, what does it mean to strive to do And, okay, let me give you a quick example. I I was having a conversation this morning and because there are different perspectives to different things, right? And so I said, we just got a really good news email, right? So from where I sat, the good news was that I had more information to end the dawdling of hanging in a space where you're just running like a hamster, 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 you're running, you don't understand it, you're going the extra mile, and you're operating in a vacuum because you're not getting information. So you never know where you are. You never know what you're accomplishing. You don't even know what your next move is. So my version of good news was, it actually wasn't good news. But my version of good news is somebody replied to the email. That was my version. It was like, Oh my gosh, we got a reply to the email, even if the email didn't say very much. And why am I bringing that up? Because we are living in a time and in a world where if if you have not made decisions in your life or your career that's based on some kind of inner passion or purpose like you did, Like when you left that job that you had, that stable teaching job, it was a version of enough, but it was a calmer, no no chaos version of it. But in the world we're living here now, if I talk to one more person that tells me how they are compromising, how they are working to strive to be part of something, the culture, the pop culture, the new culture, the work culture, and feel like they're running in place. If I had a dollar for everybody that's telling me this right now, you and I wouldn't need to be doing the show because I'd share it with you, right? <laughs> yes. Well, Dr. <laughs> Pat, we're th- that's what we're talking about today is enough. Like, what does it mean to be enough? And you, you said it really well. Like, sometimes we know when enough is enough in, in other things. But when do we say have I achieved enough? Have I been, have I done enough? Has it been enough for me as people? Because we tend to put ourselves to such a high standard that it's hard to to talk about enough. I almost called it enoughness, but I wanted to say enough because I like the idea of like, when is it enough? When are we enough? And in a culture that is, uh, you know, really based on striving and achieving and busyness, I wanted to talk today about enough because I wanted to, but for us, our listeners, myself included, I always talk about what I need to learn, right? The idea of like, what does it mean to be enough? And why do we have such a hard time with that concept? That's what we're going to talk about today. Well, let's talk about it. I mean, what was the movie with j did that movie that was simply called Enough? And that was the scenario very explicitly, uh, explicitly of when you reach a boiling point. But when you get to the point of enough, do we have to go that far? You see, this is the thing that I think you bring to the conversation because you, first of all, you're you're a top coach, you're a top speaker, uh, you've made some choices in your life where you've shown what a leap of faith is, 
And now you're out in the world and you're bringing this message beyond what this message is. You're bringing something to the forefront that's helping people. But sometimes we know when enough is enough and we still keep stretching it. Now, like the JLo movie, that was clearly like a physical situation of crazy people where abuse of situations. Aren't you also talking about reaching a place of enoughness? Can I say that word? Is that like a word? Yeah, that's that why word? I was like struggling enoughness, like reaching a place is that of that word? Enoughness. Yeah. All right. All right. So what does your enoughness barometer say? Well, so the enoughness barometer, which is interesting, I want to bring up is that we know that a hundred percent is supposed to be the top number. Like if you went to zero to a hundred, the hundred percent means fully done a plus like you've achieved whatever, but, but we have become accustomed in our culture to saying, give 110% do more. Right. And then we buy into that enoughness is doing more than we give more than you should do. And the idea of, especially in this culture and different cultures are different. So I want to bring this up. Not every culture, this isn't a universal human truth. This is culturally what we've decided and what we've agreed on. There are other cultures that have three month vacations and think nothing of it. There are other cultures where maternity leave is a year and paternity leave is eight months. There are other cultures where no one blinks twice if you take your time off. There are other cultures where it's 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 seen as bad if you work too much. There's other cultures where they take breaks in the middle of the day to recoup, right? There's other cultures where you don't work at night or on weekends. So when you think about this, it is, I'm talking to my American audience right now specifically, even though I know it affects us globally, but especially in America, that give 110%, be busy. When we even say hi to each other, how are you doing? I'm busy. How are you? Busy. <laughs> crazy busy. If you want to one up someone, you say crazy busy. And then we all look like, yeah, it's just busy time, just busy time, or oh, just trying to make it till I get to vacation. And we act like then that's okay. As long as you're busy and I'm busy, and we're all busy, everyone's okay. Busy, exhausted, overwhelmed, and tired. And then if we all, if that's our standard, <laughs> then somehow we've, we've then everyone's doing what they're supposed to do. And we don't think about this idea of the striving and the achievement. And then you have to say, well, for what? And really the busyness for what? Busyness to be busy, busy because it's part of our self-esteem. To be busy means I'm important if I'm busy. Um, if I'm doing things, it shows that I'm out in the world. What does it mean? And so I think the quality of the things that make you busy is one thing. <laughs> But just being busy in itself, is that the goal? Yeah. So yeah. that's what I want to speak to a little bit. My barometer is like on busyness is like, should we be at 100% all the time? And should we strive for 110? And so that's why I want to preface that in today is that really rethinking these cultural norms and who's pushing them and why we buy into them too. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that you saw that bumper sticker or that sticker. Oh, I, I, saw, saw sticker that oh said, I saw that happy is the busy is the new happy. I saw a sticker that said busy is the new happy. And I, real. I viscerally felt like kind of took my breath shortened because I was like that. That's so sad. And it's so true. That's what we're acting as if busy is the new happy. And it just struck me um, that this is a paradigm shift that we need to really talk about because it shouldn't equal that. And it yeah. shouldn't, the idea of what is busy in our culture? Why do we, why do we hold it up and busy doing what? And, you know, sometimes people say, oh, there's just not enough hours in the day. I'm so busy. And we all have the same amount of time to do the same things. And, and I think about how we kind of put things off on busyness. I'm just too busy and saying like, instead of saying, these are my priorities right now. This is what I'm going to get yeah. done. This is what I'm not. So instead of saying, I'm so busy. These are the things I, these are my priorities right now. This is my focus. But again, we, we don't think about how we talk about busyness. We don't think about how we also influence each other to be busy, right? And like striving and getting things done and what's next on your list. Even thinking about how from a very young age, you know what we do to kids? We say, what are you going to be when you grow up? What are you going to be? What are you going to be? And then in high school, we say, what college are you going to? And then what are you going to major in? What job are you going to have? We're pushing them so much to like identify the, the goal of the achievement instead of saying something like, who are you becoming right now? Yeah. What things interest you? 
Or, or we say to kids, like, you know, are you in a sport? And they say, yes. And they're like, are you on the varsity team? Like, are you enjoying it? Are you in learning some skills? Like how many of us are going to go be Olympic gold medals, right? But yet we push towards achievement, towards goal, towards doing the thing. And we, I wonder at what expense. And it starts from a very young age and then it keeps going for us. If you get your undergrad, then you better get your master's. If you got that, then you better get your PhD. If you got this job, then you better want a promotion to get that job. If you have this house, then you better get another house that's a better house. Like, is this your starter house? Because what's your next house? <laughs> and then I got to say, well, my, I have to giggle a bit because my mom's like, when, when are you going to move you out of your starter house? I'm like, this is the starter and the finisher, <laughs> right? Like, it's just, and also like, we went to go, my husband and I went to get um my ring fixed. And um, we were looking at rings for my wedding ring. And um, the, the person behind the counter, she was like, well, when you're ready to upgrade, you know, these are the things I'll be showing you. Then I'm like, and I said, you mean like my husband, like upgrade my husband or my ring, <laughs> you know, because I thought what's next. And that's what I mean. Every, you can't just have your original wedding ring. You have to upgrade it. You can't just have your starter house. You have to upgrade. You can't just have your job. You got to upgrade it. You can't just play a sport. You have to be the best. We do it all the time. And if you're not conscious of it, you just buy into it. And so that's my first invitation for this, you know, for this talk today is what things could you recognize that you are buying into around achievement, around being better at, and around that mm-hmm. you have to ask yourself, do I, do I want to play this achievement game? And, and is the, is the busyness of this and the achievement and the, the push to do more faster? How is that influencing me? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing that you're saying that I love. I, I'm not sure, help me out with this. I'm not sure if we use the busy word because we really we really are, or it's a placeholder for something else. Let's talk about what you just said, because the, that t-shirt where you say busy is the new happy, that is like, I, I understand it if you're talking about busy from one definition and perspective, but that's not what we're talking about here. Somebody asked me the other day, uh, last week it was, no, I think it was at table tennis on Saturday. They asked me how I was doing. And I said, I said, oh, awesome, amazing, and appreciative. And they just looked at me. Now, <laughs> you have to be around the table tennis ping pong people because the minute that you hit that ball, everybody is that. Everybody is that. That's the energy of playing that crazy sport. But it's fascinating. I rarely use the term busy. I, I mean, I, I, and when I do use it, I use it very purposefully because I rarely feel like that. And let's talk about this for a minute. We could be, our schedules can be completely full. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. But the word busy may not come to mind, especially if you're doing something you love. I rarely even use the word work unless I have to use it to people that don't just understand, right? But when people say it, what they really mean is, yes, I'm busy, but I'm totally stressed out. I can't put one foot in front of the other. I'm a bit overwhelmed. These are the things that don't get said. And, And it's exactly like you're describing. You're striving for an elusive dream, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes, when it's the striving that we have uh, to talk about, the striving. And and to your point, can you be busy doing things you like? Can you be doing things? Can your schedule be full of things you enjoy? Can you do, can do, do work that's meaningful and love your work so it doesn't feel like what we think of as like, oh, I have to go to work versus like, I get to do this work, Uh, which is what I need to reframe it as. I feel so grateful that I get to do this work. And sometimes it's hard work. And sometimes it, it fills up my schedule and it, it, it takes a lot. And I always feel like there's, there's, it can be hard work and good work, right? And we can be busy with good things too. It doesn't have to be equated with that, but it's the, the striving part where I think we get um, like, I'm, I'm busy. So that's the proof of my striving. My days are full and I'm exhausted. So that's the proof of my worthiness. I'm busy trying to achieve and achieve and achieve. And I never appreciate what I even achieved just a little while ago. So then I'm never enough. And so that keeps this pushing, like that whole thing. It's, it's, it's meant to keep us from feeling satisfied, 
feeling yeah. that we are enough, that it's enough, that our efforts are enough. It's, it's also keeps us from celebrating the wins along the way of a longer journey. The, the wins of like, I made it this far or look at what I've, what skill I've gained. It keeps us, it's like the end game is the only thing that matters and you better get there exhausted and barely able to make it. And so if you're like, I'm good, I'm blessed, I'm fine. Other people might look at you and be like, must be nice because the rest of us are busy. Like imagine if I said, Dr. Pat, how are you doing? And you're like, yeah, I'm feeling great. I'm doing things that I contribute to the world, feeling productive with my time, feeling like I really am doing things that matter. And I might be like, how do I respond to that? You're just <laughs> busy. <laughs> Well, you're it, supposed to be busy like the rest of us or you're not supposed to respond like that i mean when people ask me how are you i'm like awesome and i often get oh that's i mean i earned the nickname pollyanna patty for a reason from a lot of people but i really do most of the i woke up the other day and i said to linda i said you know what i have to tell you my nature is i'm basically a happy person mm -hmm. it's just my nature and it doesn't mean that I don't run across things that make me disappointed, uh, bust a bubble, uh, things that happen sometimes set you back a little bit. You have to regroup. But it's like Dispenza, Dr. Joe Dispenza said many years ago, he doesn't say it anymore. And he actually doesn't like when you ask him about it. It's when the movie What the Bleep came out and he said, create your day. You can create your day every day and you can recreate your day. You know, in the 12 step programs, there's a saying, you can start your day over anytime, anytime. It doesn't matter what's in front of you. You can hit a restart button, but I want to talk about this with you. The idea of enough demonstrates either fulfillment, but to some people, it may be looked at as complacent and it's not. Let's talk about this thing that we do. I will be happy when dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. I will be satisfied when dot, dot, dot. I will be beautiful, beautiful when I go, you know, get my face lifted. Um, I will be successful when I dot, dot, dot. And the reason I want to ask you about them, because truly, if those were ultimate goals that you can then move on to another goal, it works. That means you're setting a goal. But are you ever satisfied when you do that thing? Or do you look for that next thing or that next thing? Yes. Are you going to be really beautiful when you get your facelift? Are you then going to get your liposuction? Are you really going to feel like you're happy when you're successful until you wait for that next race? You see, we're caught in this. Uh, Freud, I think, had a term for it, but I don't remember. We're caught in this unsatisfied spiritually lacking loop of mm -hmm. ego yeah oh the loop of ego that's perfect or existential crisis of what does it all mean why am i doing it right and what i call what you're talking about is what i call chasing the future and my theory is called chasing the future so we always say in the future i'll be happy when this happens i'll be beautiful when this happens i'll be successful when this happens and we're chasing the future in such a way that we, the the marker of success so here's the future the closer we get the further it moves out and we never get to stand in success beauty or happiness because it hasn't happened yet it's elusive and chasing the future is hard because the the, the very nature of the future is it's in the future right so part of that is the chasing the future idea is something you have to bring some consciousness around while while I think, I mean, and I'm personally in the strivers category, like I have lots of goals and things I want to do in my life. Life is so full of opportunities I want to take advantage of. There's things I want to learn, places I want to go, things I want to do. Right. I want to do those things. I want to have um, exciting things for the future. I want to hope and plan and strive. I do. And, and that's the most important word. And at the same time, I want to find a way to be in touch with the present moment and find present moment happiness, beauty, achievement, and success so that I can actually appreciate where I am in the journey. And I always say two things can be true at once. I say this to myself all the time. You can be hopeful for the future and have things you want to do, and you could be satisfied and proud of yourself in the present moment. You could want to change things in your life and still be proud of how far you've come in this moment. You, you can even think about ideas of success and think, 
like what amount of money makes me feel successful or job oh. title. But can I feel success in this moment for if I look back on the journey, I'm somewhere in my other future self is my present moment, right? So from some past moment, my future self is where I'm standing right now and where I'm standing now, I have a future self. But in can we just say, what if I'm a success? Can we sit in it for a hot second and think about being successful, beautiful, happy, achieve, whatever those things are that we're all searching for. It's a human condition, I feel like, to f- try to find peace. And a lot of us are trying to find peace in our successes and our achievements. And instead of thinking about success to me, it should not be confused with worthiness. And a lot of us are confusing those two things. So like, what can I feel successful about my life might show the things that I've done, the things I've achieved, but they have nothing to do with our worthiness and our worthiness. That feels like a little, even a little bit closer because when you think about being worthy, what do I have to do to be worthy? Well, here's my answer. That is nothing. Right. Thank you you for saying that. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about this. I want to talk about the dualistic thinking because I recently decided to create something um, because I'm I'm always stuck on the fence. Uh, I'm stuck on this idea of good or bad, yes or no, right or wrong. And my favorite now is positive and negative. And I did a show on this not too (laughs) long ago where I said, I don't believe in positive or negative. I live my life from a positive centric perspective. Like my heart has positivity and I lead with optimism. That's where I lead. Does that mean that I never have a moment where I'm snarling or, you know, something isn't right or I, no, it doesn't mean that. But generally speaking, I approach the world in that way. And somebody asked me, one of the, one of the hosts asked me the other day, how do you do that? And I said, you know, a long time ago in the desert, in the high desert of California with my spiritual mentor who had passed away. She taught me the power of gratitude and I never forgot it. And when you can hold gratitude and the energy of gratitude, and, and I I'll tell you, you may have to fake it till you make it. I mean, I wake up before I even get out of bed, my eyes open and my brain is going, thank you, God. Thank you, spirit. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Athena. Thank you. I'm like, before I get out of the bed, my eyes are open and I'm in automatic mode. Mm-hmm. So by the time my foot hits the floor, I have done that about 20 or 30 times in my brain. I had to train myself to do that. Yes. Well, what you're saying there is so important. I had to train myself. I had to become conscious of my thinking. I also had to become conscious of the dualities that exist in human nature. I lead with positivity and optimism and Sometimes I still get frustrated and sometimes things are hard and sometimes things don't work out. And sometimes I get mad, right? Because I'm human. So I feel like when you said that you're, you're honoring the complexity of the human experience. And at the same time, talking with how you want to lead. And you're talking about how do we have to practice becoming conscious of our thought patterns in order to shift. Absolutely. Absolutely. I recently shared the rice experiment with a bunch of people. I was reminded, I interviewed Dr. Emoto a bunch of years back and he did, he did an experiment. If you haven't Googled it, Google the rice experiment, R-I-C-E experiment. You can do that. And you could see about the power of words, but the power of thinking. And I, I'm doing my own little experiment here in about a week, or actually I think I'm going to wait till I get back to Seattle, but we can plan the best day. Like I can get up like this morning and I went through that routine, right? Mm -hmm. But then you start your day, right? You go off and you start your day. And as you start your day, oopsie, what just happened, right? I mean, you're going to share a story when we come back from break because you can plan like the day. I'm going to get up this morning. I'm going to do this. I'm going to walk the dog. I'm going to have a great breakfast. I'm going to go play pickleball. That's what everybody wants me to do. They want me to abandon my table tennis sport (laughs) to be on their champion pickleball team. I'm like, no, that ball is too slow. But when we come back from break, we're going to talk about what happens if you step out into the world and the day you thought you were going to have doesn't turn out that way before we do how do people carry how do people find out about you how do they find out about your coaching your speaking coaching where they can find you all of the above 
Sure, they can go to KnutsonSpeaks.com. It's K-N-U-T-S-O-N Speaks.com. And on there, you'll see my presentations, information about coaching. And what I really think is so interesting about the work I'm doing now is that the presentations have led to coaching. The coaching has led to small group work. The small group work has led to strategic planning. And and it's been so <laughs> fun to do more retreat type work, more. Um, so it's interesting to me that my work has evolved over time to do like presentations and workshops and retreats. And um, I think the facilitation piece and the presenting piece are so fun for me. And then the coaching piece is great because individuals and groups, when we talk about this stuff in a meaningful way, it's so productive yeah. to the goals that we have for ourselves. So that's yeah. how you can find out about what I do. Yeah, I, I love it. Speak. And by the way, if you haven't heard the show that Carrie did when she talked about thinking about leaving her job, her very secure job and what it took for her to do that think about what happens when you take that leap and it's not necessarily a leap of faith it is a leap but you can plan it when we come back day off gone wrong day off gone wrong let's take a short break we'll be right back welcome back everyone welcome back Carrie Knudsen. Carrie, again, give out the website because we're going to talk about Day Off Gone Wrong. <laughs> yes, the day of gone wrong. Well, for, you can hang out with me at KnutsonSpeaks.com or on Instagram or Facebook at KnutsonSpeaks.com and find out all about what I'm doing. Um, and the story we're going to share today with Day Off Gone Wrong was this idea about how, like, I can talk about this stuff and I can think about this stuff. I can research this stuff as we're talking about today. And I'm still a human being living in the world. So th the point of this sharing the story is we can know things and then acting on them, maybe something different. And some of us, what's hard for one person is easy for someone else. What's a big aha moment for someone is like, I knew that yesterday, right? Like it's, so it's not about comparing ourselves, but it is about noticing. And it is about like noticing how things sneak up on us when we don't expect them to, or like the lessons mm -hmm. that we learn. But I had told my kids recently, I'm like, I'm so happy. I have a day off coming up. I have no gigs, no coaching, no appointments, anything for my business. I'm going to take the day off. I'm so excited just to like have a day because I hadn't had a full day off in a while. So I told them and um, that's where we left it. And then when they came home from school, they're like, how was your day off? I'm like, oh my gosh, it was so good. I went to the bank. I went to the store. I did three loads of laundry. I called the electrician. I was so, was so good. I um, went through the mail pile. I paid all those bills. I got the recycling taken care of. And as I was going through my list, I was like, again, feeling like, check me out. I had like the best day. And then my daughter looks at me and she goes, um, it doesn't really sound like a day off. <laughs> and her innocent face, just the way she was looking and it, the truth is, it wasn't. I just traded my busyness, my work, my professional work for the work of running the house and doing all the errands I hadn't done. And I thought after she said that, why couldn't I give myself permission to, to not be doing something that I consider productive on that day? So I traded my work work for home work and life work. And then there was nothing left for just, and, and I thought about like, would I have considered what I love to do is like go for a swim. Could I have like taken some time and gone for a swim? Could I have had lunch with a friend? Could I have read? I have so many books that are half read that I'm just dying to get into. Could I have spent an hour <laughs> reading for pleasure or something I love? What could I, could I have snuggled my guinea pigs? I don't know. Like what could I have done if I had a mind opened to wonder rather than to be like productive. And it was so crazy when my daughter said that, I just really was like, you're right. I just traded one busy day for another and I connected my productivity to my worthiness and I didn't give myself any permission to do anything but work. <laughs> but, you know, let's talk about that for a minute, because sometimes it does take the people that are around us to really hold up the mirror. Right. And what I mean by hold up the mirror, I mean that we think for us that that's our day off. We think that that's the day that I'm going to give myself the day off. And what's going to happen during that day off 
is I'm going to give myself permission to catch up on more work. And, mm. you know, you nailed it. I get asked um, every, every so often, you know, by a number of people, are you going to go play ping pong today? You know, are you going to go? And it never enters my mind on the days that I am scheduled to go, like Saturday, I go for coaching, group coaching Saturday at two. It never my, enters my mind not to go now except when there's a priority grader. I want to talk to you about priorities because I got to tell, tell a little tattletale on myself. It is important for me to be the leader in my business that I need to be. And I have been. And what I haven't been is back in the Seattle area in the studio every day. So I have to, you know, at some point, I'm going to be back there on a regular basis. We're doing a lot of cool things get to know Sierra, get to know Emily, give, give Jessica some relief. I will do that. But I, I got a little confused and I was preparing for today and I was re reading some of the other stories that you're going to share. And I had a moment. I'm in New Jersey because according to Mary Jane Mack, Doc, Doc Martin, a bunch of other people, Linda, almost didn't make it to a next day, May 19th. That is a priority for me. And it doesn't mean that I haven't been highly productive mm -hmm. where I am, because we tend to work harder when we think we're not being good team players, right? Mm -hmm. But I had this moment this morning, I was reading your outline and I told, I got, I caught myself. See, I created this date that I had to return because I had this moment where I thought, Carrie, if I don't go back to Seattle in November, now, mind you, Linda will be coming back with me the second or third week in December, right? We're talking weeks. I've been here months. But my brain was like, I feel really guilty not going back sooner. And yet, my best friend has a very important heart appointment on December 13th. Seriously, Pat? I mean, this is me looking in the mirror this morning. Have you lost your mind? Enough. Out of my mouth came enough. And I want to talk about this version of enough. Mm -hmm. Enough sometimes is in our mind. It's when we let the, the, when we let the inmates run the asylum in our mind. <laughs> that's what i'm talking about so i, I we want we should talk about this because yes, well, those drive and you know what the, the takeaway was no i don't have to go back in november i can wait till linda goes to the heart doctor we get whatever that thing they put in there some crazy little i'm telling it's like bionic woman thing we get that done she gets on a plane with me we fly first class and we go back and she's there to help with the launch. She's there to help with what we're building. She will mentor Sierra and Emily. We'll get some relief. But my brain wouldn't give me permission. What do you make of that enough? Yes. What do you make of them apples, right? Because they're, then you're like, here's a thoughtful person. You made up a story about what you needed to do when you want to stick with it. And then you had to wake up to like... What are my priorities? Why did I say that? Why did I feel the need to do that? Because even some of us, like you have freedom, you have built your own business, you have built your own company, you have multiple people that work for you that can take care of things. Yet in your mind, you've set the bar and the box that you're in, it's pretty limiting. And, and even like the idea of I should do this, this is the date I said, with the com competing priority of this is when my best friend's appointment is, this is where I want to be right now. This is when you look back on your life, you will not remember one day in the studio compared to one day with Linda right. or right. you will. And your brain knows that, but yet look how we gravitate towards like, well, I better, this is how my business should look, or this is how I should be productive or this. Like even it was interesting to me um, over my birthday week, at, week, I love to celebrate it. And one of my friends was like, I have time off in the middle of the day and you have time off in the middle of the day. Let's go have lunch. And I felt guilty for him. I'm like, why right. the middle of the day? But we could do it. So, cause we own our own businesses. So we could like plan lunch, but I had to get over 
I'm like, well, normally I would not, like in a regular nine to five, I couldn't, but, I'm like, but I created my business so I can do these things. So I can, and then think about working remotely. You created a business where you can work some of the time oh. you and can, but we don't give ourselves permission and we don't get out of our box kind of quick enough. Like you caught yourself I quick did. enough so that you didn't let some story about the oh. date and magically going back and being the boss of Transformation Talk Radio looks like well, this. Right. versus like your real life priorities and also your real life opportunities you have a team of people you have an entire group of people ready to support you also can work remotely and i work harder remotely see the see this is the crux of that i was talking to linda about this not only this i had a second enough i had like what is it e squared do we do e squared on this right We're, we both linda and i are helping her sister with a very serious situation with her home Mm -hmm. attorneys lawsuits right and we're in a we're in a we're in a three-week period right now while they're putting things together and going to be serving lawsuits why the bleep would i decide to get up and leave here now when this is what we've been doing to support these people which is a horrific situation and i had that moment but and you I said that moment because of what you thought you should do. Well, I had that moment because I was reading for this a show. Timeline, right, a timeline that you had set, this artificial story that exactly. feels very real. But in, but again, we all have that. Anyone we listening do it. Right now can pick a story where they have told themselves the truth of that story, set artificial timelines, make it seem very important. And then when you reality test it, it's like, blowing it's away crazy the garage, right well, like like, this gets me to success let's talk about defining success because i don't know if you're going to hold up your dot sticker calendar for us today <laughs> um know. but you know i want to talk about this because we create an illusion in our mind we create a story and i hope we can do a show on the stories we tell ourselves oh, i hope God, we can carve great. that out because this is what's going on right now I'm not saying that defining success is a story or an illusion. I'm not. I think that we strive towards the definition of purpose and meaning in life. We know what that's about. I mean, read Viktor Frankl, mm -hmm. right? But I want to talk to you about this because what I will do now, and tell me if I'm off, you're going to be my coach now. Okay. So I will have a conversation with Jessica about what it means for me to remain here two additional weeks, mind you, that's all. And what, what I can do differently. Now, while I'm here, I'm working with funders. I'm planning things. But I do have to have a conversation because I've got a team of people that think I'm never coming back and that is far from the truth. But it took this conversation and preparing for this show to see the illusion Talk about the defining success illusion. Oh, I love that. So the defining success illusion is the things we create in our minds that prove or show or like uh, the things that we're going for, for that, like this prove our success, right? And the defining success, the illusion of success is the, that we can somehow define it in a concrete form. In a concrete form. And, and that is the hardest thing to think of, especially for people running their own businesses, but people just living their lives too. Like what is success? And and then when we're on the journey, like like I'm raising my children, right? So am I successful when they, when? When they get married, when they leave, when they're financially independent? Am I successful that they pass fifth grade? Like what do I have to wait for success? Or in my marriage, when, when, when do, how do we mark success? How many years we've been together? How many years we stay together? How we resolved our last disagreement? How we managed each other's foibles? Like what is success? So this idea that we have this finish line for success while we're in real life and real life demands adjustments, changes, it has opportunities. It has things that take over in terms of priorities. So real life demands some flexibility, but our idea of success is out here like, this is what it means. And when we prioritize that, sometimes at the expense of everything else, and, and we don't see it. That's why it's such an illusion because it's, it's, and so I'll tell you my green dot story because this is, this ties in perfectly. Okay, good. Tell us. I, I, I didn't want to bring it up unless you were willing to share it. No, I'm willing to share it. I'll get it. I'll get my green dots because I think it's important because again, my humanness shows up in all the work that I do, 
Um, and I hear it from different people when they're kind of surprised in ways like this. Like I'll say in a presentation, I'll talk about a time that I cried about something. And inevitably someone will say, you cried, but you're a therapist. And, I, I, and I'll be like, yeah, but I'm also, and more importantly, I'm a human being. I'll say the same thing. I, and I talk about getting mad and I get mad a lot. Anger is a primary emotion for me around a lot of things. And people say, well, I thought you could manage your anger because you're a therapist and you're not supposed to get mad. And like, do you think therapists just like meditate all day and we're grounding ourselves and then we don't have any human emotions? I can be really good at what I do. I can be very thoughtful in my counseling and my and my consulting practice and all the things. And I'm still very much human, living in human times with the human experience. And, and we discount that a lot for people. So for me, even working on this stuff, I'm at one level talking about it and one level working at it. Cause it's a, it's not like you've achieved like, Oh, I figured this out and now I've just done it to me. It's a process and it's an enlightening and it's an opening that feels like, Oh, and the, just like your story, you creating an opening for a different outcome and another set of perspectives that are more aligned with your priorities oh, right now. Well, you've come created on. that. But this is what you help people with. I have two people here that are important to me and a little dog, right? I have a team of people that are equally important to me. But it didn't, my decision-making was not making sense. It was driven by fear. And we have done a show mm -hmm. on fear. The reality is I wake up here very early on East Coast time. And I don't stop here until generally East Coast time. So the reality is, and I had to justify this to myself till I realized I was in your little enough zone right there, mm -hmm. because I had to, I was justifying why I could stay here because I actually work 16 hours when I'm here. And then I realized, oh my God, am I even going to tell Carrie about that today? But see, isn't this why we're having a conversation? So, because we have to say enough. And yeah. what I realized I can do both. Yeah. I will work with Emily. I will work with Sierra. Linda will do that. Uh, I will make sure that the team gets the relief they need. I will work with them on learning, mentoring, training. I mean, there are things that you can do, you but don't do it when your cup can't handle it. You can't be overflowing. So tell us about, am I on track with this? Or how would you coach me, Miss Carrie? Well, when I enough love is enough. That I love what you said. Your decisions that you're making were based on fear. It was based and on you fear. Can uncover that, like fear of whatever fear. Am I being a good boss? I run this thing. How is it going to work? Will we make our payroll? Will these people quit? Um, anything you could have been thinking about, like also, what is the reputation of Transformation Talk Radio Network? Like, what does it mean? Like all the things you're talking about, and you said it beautifully. These things that drive you are driven by fear, cloud opportunity it clouds other options it clouds the definition of success i'm either back there running the studio or i'm doing nothing and that's the duality i'm either making it happen for my friend or i'm and, and i'm neglecting my business i can't do both and that's the thing is you can and you've already figured out how but it when we're driven by fear we get into dualistic thinking yeah. when we're driven by fear that overshadows opportunity and options. When we're driven by fear, we can't see another way. And so what you're saying so beautifully to me is like, oh, I've been living in dualistic thinking. Oh, I've been setting my idea of success as be in this office now, or or I've taken enough time off. How much is enough time for the personal situation of my best friend and her sister and all that stuff? When really time demands more of you because of their situation. So you have to wrestle a bit with your expectations and the reality and the story you've told yourself and what is really happening. And then after that's all sorted through you, then, then you think, if I wasn't driven by fear, but by opportunity, what choices? Exactly. exactly. And when I did that this morning, and I wanted to share this so that people understand you and I are thought leaders in the world. When they see you, they know who you are. When people see me, they know who I am. But I want to be very clear. I want to go back to what you said originally. We're still human beings. Mm -hmm. And I think I was talking to a woman this morning and we were, I was talking about being learning different with her because mm -hmm. that's part of my journey. I mean, we call it learning different now. Back then they called you slow or stupid. 
That's the reality of growing up when I grew up. Um, but I don't see myself as that. But I do have some, I do have some interesting uh, behaviors, right? One of the things I love talking with this woman today, she's going away for four months on a cruise with her son, who's kind of like me, mm -hmm. a little bit more serious. And this morning, out of all days, and your show, it is in my face. Enoughness is in my face. Enoughness is what? In my face. Mm. And yet, I want to be very clear that enoughness is a superpower. That is the double. That's the other side of the coin, isn't it? Because if you can realize this, I, I mean, I have a lot of tools and a lot of people that like today, I knew I was doing the show with you. So I prep for it. It's not like I wake up and then just get on here and blab. But if you're thinking about the show and I got, I got your email over the weekend, so I looked at it. So it's all, it's all up here, right? It's all percolating. I want to ask you, how do we help people get to question mark, knowing when it's enough, knowing when we are enough and knowing when we have done enough? Well, that is the crux of it. That's really the crux of it. And that's why I love the work that I do because there's no, there's no path that says, okay, I'm going to write a book about it and you do these three, three things and then you'll <laughs> feel like you're enough, right? It's in more of an invitation to start thinking differently because our thoughts create our behaviors, those behaviors, our actions that we take, and those kind of things set us up in different ways. But, and, and a lot of people think I have to, if I'm going to change something, I have to change everything. And I thought like, I don't think you could handle changing everything. And where do I think <laughs> you can do, right? All I think of is what, what I'm trying to do in my own life and in my work with people is like, if we're here, here's our baseline. Could we level up this much? Could we just, could we just do this much to level up and do something where we feel like, oh, this is sustainable before I do all these things. But again, it's our success culture, all or nothing. You passed or you failed versus like, I'm on a journey. I'm opening up. I'm going from here to here. And that's enough for today, right? That's enough for me to think about. That's enough to create a new pattern of thinking that might beget new patterns of thinking. So mm -hmm. the, the, the crux of this is there's no plan that anyone has that's laid out that do this and you'll feel better. It is around thinking around ourselves, around how we think about ourselves. So this idea of metacognition, thinking about your thinking, how I'm thinking about my thoughts of worthiness, of achievement, of success. I have to break those down for me so that when I see myself getting sucked into that, I can step back and be like, oh, look at those thoughts you were thinking that reinforced your idea that you're not being successful or you're not beautiful or you're not whatever you're supposed to be. Look at what you just did. Like, look at, oh, look at that. Instead of being judgmental, like, oh, of course you'll never change back. Oh my gosh, I'm becoming aware of my thinking patterns. And your story is so perfect. Like I was charging ahead with my leaving date. I knew I had to get back to the office. I made a fair story about it. It sounded very good. And then you have a little crack in your story, which were like, wait a minute. Here's my priorities. Here's what I said. And then can I do, do I have other opportunities? And you've given your own opportunities. The answer is yes. But if you had just charged ahead unconsciously, I'm going to leave on November 22nd or whatever day, like, and that's my day, do or die. In the face of reality, you would have landed back in Seattle feeling horrible, but then kind of not knowing why. And, yeah. and, and not even having a conversation like Linda and I, we spend very early in the morning, we spend time, she has her tea and I have, and we do the wordle and all that business, <laughs> but not even having a conversation to morning this morning, I realized, you know, what it is she has to get done. I hadn't even asked her up to that point because I created this whole story. But I think what you're saying to us is we have to hit the pause button. Mm -hmm. We have to just hit the pause button for a minute. Even for you, your daughter saying, hello, mom, like your day off was doing all those chores. Yeah. Right. I hope you gave like yourself break. another day off, though. It doesn't you... sound like a break to me. That's what she said. Like, that doesn't sound. 
<laughs> but then I thought, what am I modeling to her? Right? Like, what am I modeling to her about a day off or being productive? And so then you have to stop and pause. And the whole thing is consciousness, raising our consciousness, being open to learning the lessons that life is providing us endlessly around what we say we want and what we do around opportunities to grow, the ones we'll take and the ones we'll reject. Like you just took an opportunity to grow, Dr. Pat. You just took it. You oh, just I did. said, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to grow in this moment. And you didn't change everything, but you did change this much, right? And that's where the opportunity to probably feel feel a different way. Like I want to feel like I'm honoring my friendships and my priorities that I say I have in my life around friendship and love and community. And I want to feel like a successful business person and I'm supporting my team. And like, I, I can still do that. I don't want to live in the dualistic thinking of I can either do this or this, but I can't do both. And you, your, your enoughness to me says I'm enough to function in this way, whatever I've got out now, I'm enough to make this work yeah. for yeah. what it is right now. You know what the real aha moment was? And hopefully we'll do a show about the stories. Here's the real aha moment. You know, I came here to support two people. That's clear. And that's what I've been doing. But I also came here, you know, very successful, launching a new channel, blah, 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 all of that, putting financial information together, all of that. But you know what's so interesting about the discovery of all of this is that all of it can be done if we stop the illusion of storytelling by fear. Mm. See, when you act from fear, you get fear back. And I think what you've opened the door for us to understand today is when you hit the enough button, you're hitting a pause button and you're giving yourself permission to choose differently. Right? I got to sneeze and I thought I had to sneeze and I was well, going to say yes, and I'm gonna sneeze, but yes, that is exactly permission. Permission to think differently creates permission to then act differently. It also creates a space of enoughness in the moment to give you some freedom of the, the you know, things that keep us so exactly. limited. Yeah. It gives you some freedom to think differently. And then again, to take different action. And you know, best, like if I came to you and say, Dr. Pat, here's what you should do. Here's the plan. <laughs> I could not come up with as good a plan as you could come up with, but you needed time and space and freedom and opportunity and thinking processes so that you, your best self could say, what's enough in this moment. What's exactly. enough right now? Exactly. How can I show up in, in this moment? Not the moment I had planned or I'd hoped for, but this one. And that's really beautiful because that's being present and that's being open to what's possible for you. And that's that's open to your worthiness. That's open to possibility of, of two things being true at once. And that yeah. is up to me. What you just, just you know went through today, that is success. I love it. Carrie, thank you so much for today. Thank you for... Uh, everything you do. And I really hope our next show together is about the stories we tell it, tell ourselves. Sure. You're right? already giving me the topic. We'll do yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. Because I want to say it's not only what we tell ourselves, we are influenced by so much out there, mm. uh, guilt and shame, discovery, freedom. But we do have one thing, Carrie, give out your website before we go and give us your last closing message. Quote of the day, Carrie Knudsen. All right. You can find me at KnutsonSpeaks.com on an Instagram and Facebook doing all the things uh, at, at um, those channels under Knutson Speaks. And the biggest message that I want to give today is what if you could reframe, like every time you look, you look in the mirror, even thinking at what's wrong with you, what if you could think what's right with you? And every time you start to feel about not enough, could you start to think, of, well, what's enough right now? And how am I enough now? How am I not chasing the future? And how can I ground myself in the present in my worthiness? And from there, I'm sure you'll find opportunities that you couldn't see before because you were so blinded by fear yeah. and um, you know, progress that I have to striving. What would it be like to truly just be? And my last thing is true. I say this to myself all the time. Carrie Knudsen, you are a human being, not a human doing. Act like it. <laughs> I love it. Carrie Knudsen, I'm Dr. Pat. And, you know, remember what we said today. All you need to do is hit a pause button. You don't need to crazy stop. You don't need to change it. Just pause. 
and give yourself some breathing room. Carrie, thank you. Sierra, thank you so much. And to all of you, the best audience on the planet. We'll see you next time. You have been listening to Get Big Out Loud Radio, where we explore the complex, funny, and beautiful ride of life with me, Carrie Knutson, joining Dr. Pat live every second Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. I will help you to know which thoughts are keeping you small. Life out loud. For more information, visit.